Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I have something special. I picked up an SGI Octane machine at a friend's place yesterday. And uh, I started fiddling with it yesterday. And uh, it was basically DOA, so dead on arrival. No post, no nothing. It uh, does post now, however. Uh, but it uh, still has issues because it should at this point here. If I take the keyboard and press escape. It should uh, bring up a menu. I think you should be able to use the mouse too. But it is frozen at post. Uh, I do know a way to get around this problem. So this might be a hardware issue. But like I said, it was the UA when I got it. So we're gonna so we're gonna have a look at this machine and go through what I have done so far trying to get it to post. What we're gonna do to make it boot. Well post all the way and then hopefully in the future boot something and operating system. We can start by taking up the front here. There's two buttons up here and they were broken so I repaired them yesterday. Uh, so that's how you take the front off. There is a locking bar that can go through here. I have removed it because it's just in the way. It likes theft protection. So here is where you put your hard drive. So you've got three slots for SCSI drive. So I've got uh, another couple here. This is a new one I put in uh, because I wanted to try when troubleshooting try to remove the old drives. Uh, just because I read someone had problem getting his to post properly with a defective drive, so that's why. It complains if it doesn't have a drive once it posts, so I just left a blank. It's used, it's from a friend, it's way newer than the old one, so this is like a 300 gigabyte uh, U320 SCSI drive. So I left that in right now, so it doesn't complain about that because it expects at least one hard drive. So, and in front of here you have uh, a cooling fan. Uh, I think I think it's 60 millimeters. Basically, any, anything here that isn't a hard drive bay is uh, a big PCB where everything connects up to. So this is like a back back plane, but it's called a uh, X bow or the crossbar. So this connects the whole machine up. So this is actually a ship here. So it's an active back plane you could say with a ship here that needs cooling. So I think I have. We have to take, I think, the whole thing apart maybe to get to it, which I don't want to do right now. But I think that fan is kind of failing. But anyway, so let's take a look at the back of the machine. So this is the back of the machine. And the CPUs are MIPS based, 64-bit MIPS CPUs. And uh, on this note over here, it basically says there is a dual 300. So this has been upgraded. Over here you have the graphics card. You have two in this machine. One over here, one over here. So if I remove this adapter here. You can see that those cards are identical, at the back at least, just that one is flipped 180 degrees. So you pull some stops out, you can remove all the cards at the back here and remove them and replace them, whatever you want. So these are two graphics cards and uh, there's a reason for that. But these are the VGA outputs, uh, it's kind of odd ones, these are called 13W3 connectors. So these are the video out, so the color ones are the big ones here. Uh, they are, these are for uh, 3D glasses it seems. It says 3D in the glass there. And these graphics cards are very basic. Uh, despite being an SGI machine, uh, these two have no texture RAM and no texture units. So you can upgrade them with it, but these don't have that upgrade, sadly. And it's an expensive and hard to find upgrade apparently. So they can do OpenGL, but uh, you lose all acceleration when you try to use textures, so you can basically do open GL stuff without textures, and that should be fine. So no GL quake, I guess. So to be able to use an ordinary monitor, I have one of these adapters from 13W3 to 15 pin. Uh, though the problem is with these graphics cards, they are sync to green. So they will only work with monitors that support sync to green. So as far as I understand, the this, the green color is on the synchronization signal too. Up here should, I think, be a 92 mm fan. Uh, it's an Intec fan. In the middle here is a very big cage, actually pretty deep. Uh, sticks out probably a good 2 or 3 inches. Uh, and it's a PCI extension, so it also interface with the front expo. And you can put up a three PCI full length card, so that's like what people call PCI X, but I think it's 32 megahertz in this one. So it's actually PCI. 
But as you can see, this card has what looks like two PS2 ports and one network card. And actually what it is, this, this is the keyboard connector, that's the PS2, the mouse, and that's the LAN one. And this is optional. So the machine actually already has PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse and network. So we can see the standard PS2 ports down here for mouse and keyboard. There are some serial ports and I think that's a printer port. And that's your network card. So the reason why it has this extra cage with this card in here and also an extra graphics card is because this machine at some point either from factory or later was configured as a CAD Duo. So it was a kit, kit called CAD Duo. It basically allowed two engineers according to the product brief to have each have a monitor, keyboard and mouse and log in separately to basically use one computer as a, well that's like, like it were two computers. So basically this is a CAD Duo configuration and also probably why it lacks texture RAM because engineers don't need texture RAM it seems. You know? Maybe if you were creating USA part 2 maybe you needed it but uh, so that's a bit unfortunate that they like that but uh, we do have that fancier dual CPU configuration. So yeah I think the next step we should do we should take this cage out because removing this card actually makes the thing post all the way and I don't know why could be broken I have a theory of why but I really don't need it because uh, well I guess I don't have enough friends especially not engineer friends to have any use for two engineers so there are two screws up here to, to release and there is a lever down here and that's most likely due to the fact that this thing uses IBM compression connectors which are delicate little things so at the end here we have what's called an IBM compression connector you cannot touch them you should not get any dust in them in them. The manual actually states if used properly you should never ever get dust in them or have to clean them, which is quite optimistic. Uh, this is the PCI cage and upgrade module if you want or need PCI. So that's over there is the IBM compression connector. Uh, I don't see any like dirt in it, but it's, I just think from my when you're looking at it compared to the other ones I looked at on the system, it looks a bit uneven. So I don't know, this might be an issue, why the card in here seems to cause the system to hang on post. Because uh, the card that in, is in here, if I remove it, the system will post. Also my desk pad here is extremely clean, no stuff here I don't need. And uh, yeah, also you can look at... Uh, how this works. So I said there was a lever over here. If I move that, you can see it moves over here. So that's how it locks and compresses the connector. So every port has some kind of tensioning system. So ideally now, if I had some uh, cover, so I should would put the cover on uh, over here on the compression connector. I don't have any. There are people who 3D print them, but I don't have a 3D printer nor the blueprint. Uh, I saw on RMC, Retroman Cave, he did cover this machine, I did see that they used paper, it looked like paper, so I did the same on the spare board I got, that had no covers or nothing. Uh, it seems like the previous owner, uh, going by the shipping label, started collecting parts in 2007 from the States, and uh, I picked it up from a friend who got it donated a few days ago. So, from what I can understand, he collected parts of this machine and parts, and maybe put them together the way he wanted them or not, I don't know. But, uh, it seems he never ran the machine, so it could explain why it was DOA. Because I have, I have two CPU boards, uh, different amounts of RAM, external SCSI units, extra hard drive base. Uh, I don't know if he put in the do, can I do a kit or not, uh, but yeah, 
uh, these screws in here, for example, this screw, they do look like someone has been here a few times before. They do look kind of stripped, so yeah. It seems like someone might have been in this system before. Some of the connectors on uh, the compression connectors, you should never get the dust in them, but it looks like some of them actually had some. Uh, lucky enough for me, when they had a lot of like, almost like small hair, I could actually grab them between the connector, the pads, and uh, get them out that way. On the like the CPU board, the spare one I got, and uh, I tested the board, and that the board works. So this is the PCI card in here. I'm not sure if that could be the problem, but there's something here that people think is a CR2032. And on a picture, it very much looks like one. It's actually one of these cans. It's called, uh, it's called a NIC uh, number in a can. I think this is also a number in a can. It's one in the front of the system. And uh, if this fails, the one in the front of the system, you should get an error. Uh, at the at post, it contains like a serial number and stuff like that. And I also think it contains like a MAC address for the, for the network card. I'm not sure. Um, but it's like a way to serialize the machine. Uh, I haven't found any spares. You can buy the actual cans. Uh, they are like a small flash or EEPROM, a small EEPROM chip. So they contain some information, you can program them. Uh, I've seen people talk about buying spare ones because apparently they can break. So um, there could be a reason why this isn't working. Or it could just be me that don't understand how to power this thing on this card in. Uh, I did try the machine the way it came and it didn't post at all. Swapped the motherboard and it posted. but hang and removing this should make it post again. So my plan is to put this in an ESD bag. Uh, removing this card effectively turns the machine into the dual head configuration. So technically you could put like any piece of card in here. The system by default runs IRIX, which is a Unix system. Let's put this thing back together again. I did notice that one of the screws were missing over here. And then I figured out that the screws are one of those weird Imperial, I think, that is not part of a PC or not even my Imperial kits of screws. And the old screw was kind of beaten up, so I ended up tapping them for M3, 3mm, because the old ones were like 2.8 or something weird really close so I could basically tap them to M3. This one is a little bit tricky because it doesn't want to line up. Well I think that should make it stick together. Looks very nice. So let's get this uh, unit back in the system again. Uh, normally you could just leave this one out and put a cover plate on the back, but I don't have a cover plate. So putting this thing is, is the safest way to store this one. Yeah, we're gonna put this back in. So first off, we check the connector for dust. We can also check inside here. That is just a PCB with some gold plated contacts. I'm gonna power up the machine now. Uh, we'll see if it posts all the way. Got a red light that is either fault or diagnostics. Uh, it's running diagnostics, so that's fine. As long as the way I understand it, as long as it's only during diagnostics, fine, and that's what I've seen other people do on YouTube. Uh, the thing is, this is my first SGI machine. So I have no real experience with SGI machines, nor IRIX or the PROM we're trying to get into here now. Hmm. The 
still not working. I, I'm pretty sure I got in here before when I removed the card last time. So uh, ain't it working now? So it seems to not working as expected. So I'm wondering if I had the cage completely removed last time I tested it. So I'm guessing we're removing the cage and trying that. Because I don't know what else would work and why it worked the last time. So I'm just gonna remove this cage completely for testing and see what happens. Otherwise it's probably one of those flukes where something worked only once for some reason. So let's try this without the cage, uh, the PCI cage, just to see if that works. So it seems to work without the cage. Yeah, unable to boot, cannot load sash. Continue. Okay. So I expected to get to here. Now apparently I can't get to here with that with the cage installed, the PCI cage. So that's a bit odd. Either the cage is somehow broken and messing with the system. I'm doing something wrong. If you type in the like this, in, in, if you type this, I should get some information on the system. So we get the uh, system IP30 processors. 300 MHz R12000 2 MHz of secondary cache. We got two of those, so this is CPU 1 on the second. So the first one should be CPU 0. We got 512 megabytes of RAM, so that adds up with two sticks I put in it for now. One SCSI disk. And we got SI graphics time 2. The system kind of works, uh, I don't know why that PCI cage is uh, acting up. Pretty sure I ran it out the card in it, but maybe I just removed it last time. So it's probably not the PCI card, and it's the cage that is acting up for some reason. We have more or less concluded that there's probably something wrong with the PCI expansion bay. That, or I am missing something. I did Google the problem, and I did find another user with the exact same symptoms as we see, where it gets stuck, and uh, he didn't find any other solution than removing the bay. So that didn't really help me in trying to like figure out what actually is wrong. But uh, his suspicion and people who talk to us that the compression fitting is probably the culprit. And I think this looks kind of funny under the light. It didn't look as even as the other ones. This will have to go. And I don't have like a need for the PCI expansion bay right now for anything we're going to do. I don't have any SGI specific PCI cards other than the one that's in it. So, And uh, it's kind of redundant for a single user. So instead, I made this piece of paper to make this piece of steel or metal. So I don't have a printer. Apparently people 3D print this um, back plate when they remove this. Uh, you don't want the airflow just to go out there. You want it to cool the CPUs. But I can't afford a 3D printer. So I made the better thing, which is one out of metal. Uh, so this is one millimeter. So pretty sturdy. So we're gonna mount this instead and cover the hole. So this should fit almost like a glove. A lot of hand filing. Would be nice with a 3D printer, but I still prefer to make things out of metal like original stuff. It's actually much cheaper than a 3D printer. This takes a little bit of work, hand filing. Nanga grinding costs almost nothing. 
steel is super cheap, like an ordinary PC case consists of about 10 euros worth of steel, I would say. Built the case myself. Buy it per buy it per kilo, so you could basically weigh it and check the kilo price of steel. But it's pretty cheap as steel in Sweden. So let's power it up here again. There are a few things I want to check on the system before we proceed with the with more maintenance here with with the hardware. Hopefully we get past the diagnostic now. Let's go in here again. I checked uh, in the, the before, I think. So, yeah. Now we can do print, I think. Print N. We should get some info. We've got the. So we can check the manual for all these things. I was down actually looking at the manual. So this is like the console, what it should use. G, I think, was default graphics. Uh, you can set it to a serial console, I think, and stuff like that. And you got the baud right there. Disk less zero. So you can set that to one if we don't want the hard drive. We want to do network boot only. Stuff like that. Uh, you got the IP address over here. I haven't checked how to set that to DHCP. Probably need to do that, maybe. Uh, but boot you one. So we've got volume zero. The thing is, I tried out a motherboard, and that thing makes a shine. It's like a Mac, and this thing didn't. And I actually wanted to check. It says volume zero here, but boot unit is one, so it's probably because of the volume. So we can probably set the volume. Oh, we have need to do a it. set, and uh, then volume. Oh, there it is. Uh, set volume. Let's say fifty. Can we do print and maybe set um, 50? Print and. Ah, it's at the bottom now instead of the top, so it seems to be the latest thing changed. Okay, I have no idea if you could reboot, I didn't check. Oh, that works now. Ah, work. Technically we can install a system now, I guess, but I want to put back a ton of RAM. So I'm gonna power this down and we're gonna take out the motherboard. Also, I want to try the other motherboard in it and see what's on there. So let's get to some of the fun bits. So this is the kind of motherboard maybe. I don't remember the exact term, but... Uh, I would call it a motherboard essentially. It hosts the CPU, a chipset, basically a memory controller, RAM, and the RAM goes in pairs. So this has two sticks of 128 megabytes each for 256 total. So this is a dual CPU system. On this CPU here, it's removable. There are screws here, I think there and there. And the other screws are for the actual CPU to separate the heatsink from the CPUs. And you should not do that unless you know what you're getting into because the CPUs are not soldered. Uh, and they are not socketed. They are they're some kind of interposer. I can, there are videos on YouTube on a guy taking apart. And I don't blame him for that. But uh, essentially, if you lift the heatsink off, you are most likely get the CPU to hit you and those interposer frames and you might damage everything. So there's nothing to put back together again, that's gonna work. And uh, since uh, anything underneath here is basically covered in thermal pads, uh, I don't see any point, there's like no paste to dry out or anything. So anyways, this is the CPU and this is a dual CPU and you know it because, well, it's this big. A single CPU would be about half and would sit here and there's one connector below here so you can't just buy another cpu if you want dual you have to swap out the whole cpu module here so it's similar to a mac it's much bigger so for scale i got the uh, uh, measuring tool here and if you count the pcb at the bottom here it's uh, around uh, 
I estimate about 21 centimeters, so that's uh, 8 inches and a quarter long. And it's uh, see it, 12 and a half centimeters wide, so that's uh, 5 inches wide. One and a three quarters tall, so you can actually flip it up here. So there you can see the CPU. You can actually measure the PCB as a fan. It's around two and a half millimeter thick PCB. I can probably go measure your motherboard or something to compare, but it's pretty beefy PCB these. The motherboard and CPU PCB. Probably a lot of layers for its time. But anyway, this is the backlit of the CPU. It includes like cache memories. There are cache memories, L2 cache on both sides. The memory, like I said, comes in pairs. It's some proprietary, I think, 200 pin modules. I don't remember if they were like precisely 200 pin or not, but uh, yeah. Some custom type of RAM, and you've got that Dallas chip down here. So there are two chips underneath here, too. And this is an older revision motherboard, so the actual revision number should be somewhere around here. So this is an IP30 board 03000887003 Rev M. So from what I have read on Wikipedia, the 003 and 004 boards are known to be buggy, apparently, and not be the best boards, apparently. And you want a 005 when you were another board that is in the system is a 005 Rev A, I think. So we can we're gonna look at the other board. You're also gonna see that the heatsink is different because it's only half of this heatsink here, and then it's a black one over here. I made some temporary covers for the uh, compression compression uh, connectors, and I guess this is mostly power. So let's put this board into the system, figure out what this is, because I need to take the other board out anyway to populate the RAM slots and see if the RAM works in that board again, because I cleaned the slots that were quite dirty. Let's remove the motherboard. Uh, first, I'll screw some screws here, spring-loaded. It's already done, mostly to secure it. I guess it doesn't like get loose when you move it to something, but it's uh, because of the compression fittings, uh, the compression connected, how they work, it should be fine. These were actually broken, so that's why they're not screwed in, because I had to glue this one back. Took that from the other motherboard, and in the other motherboard's ESD bag was part of the plastic uh, uh, knobs uh, in that bag. So I suspect this board is the upgraded board, and the other one is the old board. That's my suspicion. But anyway, you pull those. And then I guess you pull the board. I really don't want to pull in the plastic too much, it's already brittle, that's way too brittle. So, yeah, you really don't want to keep taking boards in and out due to the compression connectors limited lifespan. But yeah, when the machine isn't working and you want it to work, not much of a choice. So. Can easily get snagged on it, but we only have two sets of memory here. It might look as four, but that's because they actually stacked two PCBs. So. so this is our second motherboard. Two dims of RAM and an unknown CPU. Isn't a 300? It's, they have written something on top of here, but it's not legible anymore. And like the other board, there's no like proper modern number or code that I can that I can check against the list of known CPUs. So I'm just gonna have to put it in and test it. And before, because I couldn't get it to post proper, I couldn't check the environmental variable, uh, the environmental. Uh, NV, I think it was called, or print in. Can do that to figure out what was in it. So a guy on YouTube just slapped this thing together. Plus it's quite not that nice to push on this thing with nothing on the end. So basically we should be able to boot with other board now. To figure out what's on there it would be kind of nice to know. So I'm gonna hook it up and I'm not gonna connect the speaker this time because I know the sound works on this board. Let's power it on and see what happens. So 
Now the board is working. I never know with these compression connectors. So there's no more plan on putting this board in because it's an older board. I might use the RAM if some of the RAM is broken from another board that I took out. So, uh, I ran the hinv command and uh, this CPU board is dual 195. We know what it is now and I can actually put a label on this board. So maybe I could trade this board or CPU for something else like a better graphics card. You never know. But we're gonna power this down now, label this board and get the other board and put some uh, put back the RAM in there to see if some of the RAM is broken or not because it didn't post with it. All the RAM installed when I got it. Dual 300 meters uh, motherboard and CPU is on the table here. And the, uh, you can see the finish on this board isn't as nice on the heat sinks. It's quite rug. It's like the real cost, uh, the defects here. So I think they cast these. And the other one was probably milled. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of a aesthetic down downgrade, I guess. I do have put on my compression connector protections. But you can see there's no like wavy pattern in the heat sinks here or anything like that. It's all much more simplified. I and mean, I can't even see a model number on there. There's something here obviously, but yeah. Not as fancy, but faster, so I guess that's what counts. There's also a bodge wire going from over here. And here you can see the heat sink combo has changed. But uh, yeah, and the revision of the board is over here. So this is a revision 005A. I put a sticker on there, and I don't know if there's something else on there, but yeah. So what I want to do also is check the RAM. So it should be two gigs because it kind of makes sense now. The box that the other motherboard in came in, the 195 times two, had dual 300 written on it with two gigs of RAM. And I have two gigs of RAM, one and a half here and a half here. Because it was all installed, so, the, so this seems to have been bought as a kit and then put in the system, but it doesn't work. Could be a reason for it not working, because there should be a metal bracket going over here and down to this heatsink under here. With some padding here to hold the RAM place, because there's no hook on this side, like a lot of modern motherboards, PC. There's a hook on this side, a uh, latch or hook, I call it. Uh, so... There is something here to make sure the RAM can't fall out. I don't think it should, because I tried to pull at it, it shouldn't fall out that easily. But it seems like to think this was a real risk. So th there is a piece of metal that should go here, and that isn't with any of the motherboards. So I have checked the part number here on this RAM, here, these two. But you can see the part number here. This is SGI part 9010021. And it should be the same another one. We can also see how the double stack nature of the RAM, we're gonna look closer at that. But from what I understand, since the early board takes 2 gigs, you can have 256 times 8. And uh, apparently the 256 from the later boards are not compatible with the earlier boards. That's why I want to check the port number. I don't know if they made it, whoever sold it made something weird, but this is a different part number. This is part number 9470223 from NEC, the both from NEC. So yeah, slightly different part number. They look very similar though. I can't see any obvious difference, but I might be missing something obvious. But we're gonna go through them and install them. And I plan to install all of them at once. And then if it doesn't work, I'm gonna pull out two at a time because they run in pair. So then I can pull it out from this way. I could install two now and test it and then install another two if it works and so on. But I might as well do all of them because I did clean out the slots here. They were filled with hair, dust and particles like you could see it on the edge. So it might be as easy as that. A lot of gunk. And I might also shake and loose. So I'm just gonna install. All of it, and if it doesn't post, then we take two out of time. And I think I'm installing it in the same order I took them out, I kind of kept track of them. 
And I have cleaned all the edge connectors on them. I still don't show you because it would be kind of boring. And so far they have all been the new port number. Am I missing something here? We could probably make that uh, plate that goes over here if we really need to, but I'm not planning to move this thing around right now. Let's see, yeah, same port number. And we can take a look before we put this in here. So this is one stick, and I think it's 200 pins, might be wrong on that, though. but here you can see, like the basically two PCBs connected together with a lot of pins. Let's that aside. This is actually a different port number now, I think. It's 901002 Okay, so these also ends at 21 over here. So these two are probably the same. So there seems to be two different port numbers. So maybe that's an issue, but uh, then I guess the sold the whole thing as untested, which would be kind of annoying for it. So this is the last stick of RAM. And now we can remove the covers at the back there, put those on the motherboard because I don't, I don't think we need it here anymore. And then we can test this board now. And hopefully it works, otherwise we have to take two sticks out at a time. And we have two working sticks on the board, so we could technically, if one is broken, run two of those instead for 1.75 gigs of RAM. I took the liberty to boot it up while my camera was uh, charging and uh, and loading some footage and it started up. It took quite a little bit longer, like not that long, but uh, I think it's doing like a memory count with the diagnostics, so that took probably four times longer because it got four times the RAM. But it did start this time, so I guess reseating the RAM and cleaning the dim slot with some electronic cleaner I did uh, uh, when I got it to work with the two dims, uh, so yeah, it's probably they probably got dirty or moved out of place, so to, to, so they didn't work. So we actually posted now with uh, two gigs of RAM installed, but I don't know if it's actually all there. So we're gonna try that. Get my keyboard. So we're gonna do that. I think the fin we could show that, and, we, and we're also gonna set Swedish keyboard while you're at it. So let's see, uh, 2,048 megabytes of RAM, so that's nice, yeah, no broken RAM. So that's that's a good thing, so we don't need to like, take the memory out of the other board. So yeah, we, up, uh, we have our dual R12,000 CPUs, 2 megs of cache. The I cache and the D cache, so that's the L1 cache, is 32 kilobytes per, per core, per CPU. So yeah, I think this system is far enough, gone, come far enough that we can technically install something. So I can look at those options, but I do have the, the original drives that came with this. So you could try to boot IRX. And here I have, a, like I said, a 10,000 RPM 200 gig uh, Seagate Barracuda. I picked it up from a friend, two of them. I don't know if the other one is working now. I don't know if this is working, it spins up, but that one has like a bonking sound when you lift it up. So it sounds like something was loose. But anyways, uh, it's, it's normal uh, SCA, SCSI ADV. So I got these cages for it. Uh, there were two drives with two cages installed and I got another two cages with some bits missing from one cage. I have uh, two of them here. So at the bottom we have IRX. It would have been nice to put a label on it. This is IRX 6.4 October Q398. So, yeah. uh, that might have been upgraded, who knows? But uh, that's what it says on the label. And these are 4 GB Seagate Barracudas. Not very big at all. I don't think later IRX will fit on this one I have seen. But with 300 GB, we can. We won't have that problem. And this is another identical drive. Uh, I was sitting up in the second slot here. I think it's a requirement for the dual uh, or the CAD duo configuration that was second drive. So I think that was part of the kit. It says P9 4G int. 
So we put those back and so you can boot anything off that. I have no idea because I never used an SCI machine before or IRIX. And let's fire it up and see if so we can boot something. Uh, yeah, I can do this, see if we can start it up. I have no idea it's gonna work now. IRX 6.5, so that's right, the 87-2001. That's more than I expected. And I'm not using a capture card because, like I said, green, sync on green I can't do capture without some special adapter in between and we we'll split, split it out and more convert it to more traditional analog VGA. Uh, it's complaining about the network cable. I have no network access. Hopefully it just ignores that. Seems to want to talk with stuff. I think a lot of that is dead and buried. I think it has to look at internal archive for that. Login name Diag Roger. Login. One, two, three, four. Login. And login. Password. Yeah. Whoever did that was probably smart enough with a proper password. Mm -hmm. So I can't get in without uh, routing the system, which is possible. It's not. Not like that. I, I know how to do it on Linux, so I already read somewhere how to do it on the, this machine, but uh, I don't really want to touch these drives because there could be files containing uh, uh, license keys and stuff, so I'd rather archive these drives later and just keep them as is right now and not change anything. But the fact that Irix boots is fine enough for me right now. I can put the cover on here again. So I think for now, and uh, this is going to be part one of, I don't know how many parts, but it depends on how things cooperate. But uh, I think this is enough for one video. We've got the machine hardware wise able to post and uh, boot apparently. Uh, it seems the PCI case was broken. Uh, I suppose. My, it could be the expo in the front here that has some issues just related to that particular connector too. But yeah, I don't really need that uh, design cage, so I might as well skip it. We got all the RAM working. Uh, like I said yesterday when I got the system tested out, it didn't, they didn't even post uh, no red LED for, or anything. Just a white shine like we got now. So, but there was a lot of dirt in the memory slots and like I said it should be a cover like holding the memory down to make sure it don't get loose. So, so anyway I think this is enough for this part so thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.